Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Micah and this channel is dedicated to learning, teaching, and discussing everything about cybersecurity. So today we are in Try Hack Me, and if you're not familiar, Try Hack Me is a great way to learn cybersecurity. And so it has bite-sized gamified lessons. You can learn and practice your skills by following a structured path and reinforce your skills in real world environments. And it's beginner friendly, it has exercises in every lesson and has an awesome community. Try Hack Me has a Discord, and you can go in there and ask questions. You can post memes. Uh, you can just fellowship with other people in the community. It's really awesome. Let's take a look at some of the modules in the paths that Try Hack Me offers. So we have the Junior Penetration Tester, which is your red teaming, your offensive security. You have your cyber defense, which is your blue teaming, your defensive security. And if you're a complete beginner, you don't know where to start, you can come in this room. It has basic Linux, network security, scripting, everything you need to get started in cybersecurity. And some of the modules down here, Linux fundamentals, intro to pen testing, vulnerability research, cryptography, incident response. I mean, the list just goes on and on. So if you're not signed up, I would definitely recommend that you get signed up today. 80% of the content here is free. So basically you have nothing to lose, everything to gain. And I don't get any money or kickback from referring you to this website. So there's absolutely no reason for you not to sign up today. So with that out the way, let's get straight into it. All right. So today we're in this room called hacked and the tagline is find out what happened by analyzing a PCAP file and hack your way back into the machine. So we're going to do a little bit of network analysis using Wireshark and then we're going to figure out how the attacker got into the machine and then use the same methods to hack back into the machine ourselves. So let's get started. So it says, oh no, we've been hacked. It seems like our machine has got hacked by an anonymous threat actor. However, we are lucky to have a PCAP file from the attack. Can you determine what happened? Download the PCAP file and use Wireshark to view it. So I've already downloaded the task file. Let's open Wireshark. And we see if we analyze this or analyze the endpoints here, we see we have only two hosts talking to each other. If we go back to the packets, we can see that <clears throat> this source 192.168.0.147 is trying to communicate to 192.168.0.115 over port 21. So this is our attacker and this is the, um, the machine that got attacked. So if we pivot to FTP, actually, I think we already have our first um, first answer there. The attacker is trying to log into a specific service. What service is that? We can type in FTP. We've seen port 21, so we know it's FTP. It's a correct answer. <clears throat> so second or third question, there is a very popular tool by Van Hauser, which can be used to brute force a series of services. What is the name of this tool? So we can just Google tool by Van Hauser. And we see that that tool is Hydra. We see it several times here. And so Hydra is a brute force tool. You can use it to brute force usernames and passwords to different services such as FTP, SSH, Telnet, M uh, Microsoft SQL, etc. So type in Hydra, it's the correct answer. The attacker is trying to log on with a specific username. What is the username? Let's go back to Wireshark. I said um, we can filter on FTP. We see <clears throat> that the user that is being used to brute force this machine is Jenny. What is the user's password? So if we scroll down a bit, we see that uh, the attacker used like a dictionary list of different passwords. Most of them were incorrect, but we if we keep going, we see that they were eventually successful and that password was password one two three and you see the login successful in the 230 response right afterwards so we know that this is the password what is the current ftp working directory after the attacker logged in and we should be able to see we'll go down uh the attacker used the command pwd which is print working directory and you see that var www HTML is the current directory that the hacker landed landed in. So let's do that. Bar www or HTML. The attacker uploaded a backdoor. What is the backdoor's file name? And again, if we scroll down a bit, we should see 
a file uploaded to the shell uh, shell.php the backdoor can be downloaded from a specific F, uh, URL as it is located inside the uploaded file what is the full URL so this is a bit tricky but I think if we do um, FTP data I believe we should see some more information So PHP reverse shell is the file is a reverse shell implementation in PHP. It's copyrighted by Pentest Monkey. And if we keep scrolling, sorry, let's move that up. We see we finally find a URL here. Let's copy that value. Let's go back to try hack me and remove this extra stuff from the end and front here. It's, oh. All right, that should work. So next question, which command did the attacker manually execute after getting a reverse shell? So we should no longer be looking for FTP data. We should be looking for HTTP data since the attacker has a web shell now. And we can just start here at the first packet and then do follow TCP stream. If we move up to stream number 20, we can see all of the um, data from the web server. So the first command that the attacker ran is who am I? So let's go back to try hack me. What is the computer's host name? Uh, we can go back to the TCP stream. At the very top, we see the uh, name of the server. Also, we can see it down here. We can see the user and then the name of the server. So it is wire with a three. So let's copy that. Which command did the attacker execute to spawn a new TTY shell? So after the attacker ran who am I and then listed all the files with their uh, permissions, you can see that the attacker used Python 3 dash C import PTY, PTY.spawn, bin bash to spawn a new TTY shell. So we can copy this. Which command was executed to gain a root shell? So once the attacker spawned that new shell, they were able to switch user to Jenny with the password that we found before. And then they ran sudo L and this lists all of the sudo, sudo permissions for that user. And we see that user Jenny may run all of the sudo commands. So then the attacker used sudo su to switch to the root user. So uh, I forgot the, what the question was. Which command? So, oh, sudo su. Because Jenny has all the sudo permissions and that allowed the attacker to switch to root very easily. So the attacker downloaded something from GitHub. What is the name of the GitHub project? If we scroll down a bit, we see that the attacker then used git to download um, this git file from this GitHub user forbidden. So it, the name of the project or the repository is Reptile. The project can be used to install a stealthy backdoor on the system. It can be very hard to detect. What is this backdoor called? Let's go to that repository. So we're going to copy this and we're going to paste this into our URL field here and uh, let's remove that part. So this user forbidden, uh, you can see reptile right here and <clears throat> in its description, it says that it's a rootkit and we can further just look into this by saying rootkit. This type of malware that's designed to give hackers access to and control over a target device and is perfect for use as a backdoor. So we know that that is correct. All right, so we figured out pretty much how the attacker got into the machine. Now it's time to use these tactics to hack back into their machine ourselves. So uh, let's deploy the machine and then I'll come back once this machine has started up in a minute. So see you then. All right, so now my machine is up and running. Let's open a new terminal window. 
and then let's um let's log into this FTP server. Uh, what's the IP address? Ten dot ten dot two thirty nine dot two o two. We're gonna use the password Jenny. Oh wait, but it says that the attacker has changed the user password, so we have to replicate the steps and figure out the password for this user now. So let's just exit out of this. Clear. So let's open Hydra. And as you see, I already kind of started this. So I'll explain the syntax here in a second. Um, let me get this IP address in here. All right, so Hydra, the name of the tool used to brute force earlier. And then L specifies the user. And then capital P uh, specifies the word list or the file uh, used to brute force this uh, this user's password. And if you need to look at the documentation, you can just type you can just type Hydra, and basically um, read through this at your own leisure. So L is login login name, capital P is the file, and then um, we have our service here right. Uh, specified as FTP and then the IP address of the machine. So let's start this right now. And this should just take a second. 12 seconds later. All right, so we see the login Jenny and then we see the password 9876543321. Uh, it's pretty basic. So let's now log into the FTP server with the user Jenny. So FTP and then the IP address of the FTP server, Jenny, and the password, 9876543321. And if we do a PWD, we see we land in the same directory that the hacker was in earlier. So let's do ls-la, list the files and the permissions, and we see that the shell that the hacker uploaded earlier. Um, so let's get that file. And I forgot which directory I was in before I started this, but uh, it looks like I'm in the root. So if I do ls, I, yep, we see the shell.php here. So let's do a um, gedit shell.php, or you can use nano or v or vim, whatever you use, just a uh, text editor. And we're going to change this line right here. Um, sorry if you can't see that. Try to make this a little bit bigger. Um, I'm not sure. But anyways, so you're going to find this the IP address field, and then you're going to change that to your IP address. So let me do that real quick. All right, so change the IP address. The port stays the same. Hit save then exit. And then back at our FTP prompt, we're going to uh, remove that pre-existing shell.php. And I believe it's mdelete shell.php. Yes. If we do an ls again, we see that the ph or the shell.php has been removed. So let's now use git or actually put and shell.php and that will upload the file from our um, local system. Do an ls and we see that the shell.php doesn't have an execute permission anymore. So let's do site ch or ch mod seven 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 and then shell dot php ls again and we see that we can execute the file the shell dot php now so awesome so let's grab the ip address of this ftp ser or this web server let's go to that here let's navigate to the shell dot php and before we hit enter, let's open a listener using Netcat. 
So netcat, uh, verbose, listening port, port 80, hit enter. And we should see a shell here in a second. Awesome. So now we are on the FTP server or the web server via FTP. Or that was using FTP. All right, so we do ls. We not sure exactly where we are. Pwd. We're in the root directory of the web server. So we can su Jenny. Ah, uh, that's right. So we need to spawn a new terminal. And um, we can use the same command as earlier. That uh, tty shell or that tty um, shell command here using Python three. You just copy that, paste that here enter and we have a brand new shell so we can do ls we can do pwd we can do who am i Oop. and we are www data so let's s you to jenny same password nine eight seven six five four three two one and let's can we clear the console no we can't um all right so from here we can do another sudo l shows our sudo permissions And again, Jenny can do all sudo commands. So let's do sudo su. And now we're root. We just rooted this machine very easy. Um, so it said that the flag that we're looking for is inside the reptile directory. So we've done all this. We ran Hydra. We got the password. We created a listener on the designated port. We became root. So now we just need to read the flag. So let's do a ls. Um, where did it say it was? The reptile directory. So let's just move back into the home directory. Um, oh, my terminal froze. All right, so that was weird. But okay, we're back. We have roots on this machine, and we're looking for the reptile directory. So let's um, cd into the home directory of the root. Do ls. And we see reptile, we can just do CD reptile ls, and then we see flag.txt here. So let's cat that out. And we have our flag. So let's see if this is what we're looking for. All right, and that's it. That is the hack room on Try Hack Me. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, leave a comment and subscribe if you feel so inclined. And that's it for this video. Until next time, see ya.